John chapter 9. Well, let's go first to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 2. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 2. I'm not a traditionalist. I don't purpose to try to hold people to midnight. You know, but uh, I just try to be led by the Spirit of God and go with the way, you know, with what we are fixing to face next year. Let's go to uh, Malachi, excuse me, chapter 4 and verse 2. Chapter 4 and verse 2. Unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, that's in his rays, in his beams of light, light, with healing in his wings. You shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stone. You know, uh, a lot of you brothers that helped me out there with those calves, they don't know what happens when a calf is, 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 is pinned up. They don't know what happened, Brother James. Man, I tell you, when they can break free, they kick them high leg and kick, and that kick bumped you. Where God say, you're going to, you know, we've been pinned up like calves in the stall. But there's a big old field, green, fresh, and them calves can't wait to get out that stall and get out there and nourish that field. That's what he's telling us. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2, <coughs> Sister Blue, you got your microphone? And I want you to get ready to read John chapter 9. And uh, uh, and then we'll just go from there. But Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2. Someone got that? The people that walk in darkness. Listen, the people that walk in darkness. Have seen a great light. The people that walked in darkness have seen what? A great light. A great light. Uh-huh. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. That's us. We're dwelling in a land with the shadows of COVID. With the shadows of death. We've lost 800,000 people. The world has lost over 5 million people. Haven't they? Uh-huh. Upon them has the light shine. Upon them has the light shine. Is all of that verse? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's read. Uh, while we're in Isaiah, read Isaiah. I'll tell you what. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 60. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. For thy light is come. For your light is come. And the glory of the Lord and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness shall cover not just a town, not just a community, not just the city of nation, but darkness right now is covering the whole earth. Uh huh. And gross darkness. And gross darkness. People. You know what gross darkness? It's a spiritual darkness. Gross darkness will cover the people. But listen, go back and, and, and read it from the beginning. And what does it say from the beginning? Arise. He said, Arise, shine, shine. For thy light is come. For your light is come. And the glory of the Lord. The glory of God is risen. Is risen upon thee. Upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Thank God. God, you know, at least the light is come before the darkness. Can cover the earth. Amen. Okay, let's read, Sister Blue. John chapter 9, start in verse 1. I'm going to read quite a few scriptures so y'all just tune your ears in. 
And as Jesus passed by, uh -huh. he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked He saw a man that was blind from his birth. Uh, is that right? Mm -hmm. You know, y'all don't know it, but we're identified with this scripture. We've been blind from birth too. Spiritually blind. Born in iniquity, shaping and sin. Born into a world where Jesus said you must be born again. So we were born. This man was born blind physically. We were born blind spiritually. Go ahead. And his disciples asked him, saying, The disciples asked him, saying, Go ahead, just read on. Master, who did sin? Uh huh. This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest, made manifest in him. Yes. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. That's where we're at right now. That's where we were in 2020. That's why it seems like it's been 2021. Night coming when no man can work. Uh-huh. As long as I am in the world, yes. I am the light of the world. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Remember that Jesus is the light of the world. Go ahead. When he had thus spoken, uh -huh. he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, and said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, he is like him, but he said, I am he. I am he. Uh-huh. Therefore said they unto him, how will their eyes open? He answered and said, a man whoo, that is called that is called Jesus yes. made clay and anointed my eyes. A and man said, that is called Jesus. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, I feel that one too. <laughs> made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Salaam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. They didn't want to hear that. Go ahead. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him, How has he had received his sight? He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes. He put and clay I on mine. He made it out of the same material when he created Adam. You know, created Adam and Eve from the dust, from the ground. He said he took some of the same material that he made Adam and Eve, and he uh, uh, created a uh, pupil. He created you know, an eyeball in there. Eyeballs where I could see. I was in darkness all my life. Close your eyes for a moment. Everybody, close your eyes for a moment. Imagine you have to live that way the rest of your life. Imagine you have to live in that darkness. Okay, go ahead. He put the clay up on my eyes and I washed and do see. Put clay up on my eyes and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, uh -huh. this man is not of God. This man ain't God. Because he keep it not the Sabbath day. They uh -huh. put the Sabbath above this miracle. But listen, this was a miracle that had not happened since God created man. This was a sign that the Messiah would come on the scene. That the blind Isaiah 35 said the blind would see out of obscurity. The lame would walk. The deaf would hear the words of the book. And the dumb would speak. Go ahead. See, this 
was one of the signs that they looked forward to to recognize the Messiah. This was one of the miracles that connected the Jesus with uh, being the Messiah, being the Savior. Where the Messiah means Savior. Go ahead. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? Man, they seen something that eyes hadn't seen. Ears hadn't heard. Right. Had him into their hearts. Go ahead. And that was a division among them. Uh huh. They say unto the blind. They man, say to the blind. What sayest thou of him? Uh huh. That he has opened thine eyes. He said, He is a prophet. He's a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight. Until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, whom ye say was born blind? How then do he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who has opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore would you hear again? Will ye also be his disciples? <laughs> then they rebelled, reviled him, and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Jesus said, Before Moses was, I am. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he has opened mine eyes. Now, ye know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Look at his name, preacher. Go ahead. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man was not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and doest not teach us and they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Do thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they and they that which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto them, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. Well, that's about the way it is with the nation. People in the nation. Oh, we, we don't need prayer. We don't need God. We don't need, you know, the blood of Jesus. Everything is all right. We got money. We got uh, money. We got stimulus money. We got this. We got, but yet, to ever learn, never come into the knowledge of the truth that what's brought this pandemic, this plague, was sin. 
And what have caused a lot of trouble in America is we chose the wrong president. I don't know why when I say that I feel serious. But it's still the truth. God had given us somebody that was building up our military, that was helping us. Gas prices was down. We didn't have this inflation. We didn't have all this stuff going on now. But now, look at how things is falling apart. Man, been in office for all year, and I can't think of one thing good he's done for our nation. I know some people don't agree with that. That's because, well, they now. Let's go ahead on. I'm going to go into this. Uh, I know some people don't like to talk politicians, politics and stuff like that. But it you all know, blends in together. Jesus, uh, somebody wanted to see Jesus. King Harold wanted to see Jesus. And Jesus said, you go tell that fox. I cast out devils yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You know, Jesus, he told Herod, just like John the Baptist told him that he went and married his brother's wife and that they was living in a dungeon. And that's why she had John the Baptist's head cut off. So folks don't like to hear certain things. But let's um, read here. See, Malachi 4 and verse 2. Read that one again. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. Born blind. Born blind. Helped by change in darkness. We all, as I said a while ago, was born blind spiritually. You don't believe it? Read over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. Read that one. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Has shined in our hearts. Has shined in our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge. To give the light of the knowledge. Of the glory of God of, in the face of Jesus. Of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Nice. Uh-huh. We don't? No, that's good right there. Yeah. See, this was uh, uh, one of the ways that they were to know the Messiah. When one was coming and began to open the blind eyes, that was one of the major signs that the Savior had come. God told him in Isaiah 35, this was one of the signs that the Messiah had come. They did not want to accept that because to accept that, they would have to accept him as being the Savior. Okay. Let's read it. Here in um uh, I, I believe that Jesus, you know, I don't believe in all this is Christmas stuff, but if we're gonna celebrate Christmas, let's celebrate it as Christ's birthday and not the way the pagans, not in this Babylonian stuff. I don't believe in all of that stuff. God said, come out of that mess. You don't mix Jesus with all of that tradition. Do you? And you don't mix. Uh, if, 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 if they celebrate Easter, you don't mix uh, his resurrection with asteroid. That's what Easter came from, asteroid. Asteroid was the goddess that Jezebel prayed and worshipped to. That's right. But anyway, let's go ahead on. Right here. He tells us there's another sign. Unto us, a child is born. Son is given. Government's going to be upon his shoulders. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. These were signs that came from the same prophet Isaiah that said that he would open the blinded eyes. And all of these signs fell in line exactly like Isaiah spoke. Let's go to Colossians chapter 
1 and verse 12 and 13. Burn who has me. delivered us from who has uh -huh. the powers of darkness? Who has delivered us? That's verse twelve. Yeah. Giving thanks unto the Father. Giving thanks to the Father. Who has made us meet to be partakers? Who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light? Uh huh. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Delivered us. You know, you wonder why your family can't get saved. And can't quit habits. And why? They can't just, you know, come out of things. You know, they have to be delivered. Mm -hmm. There is a power that's behind this darkness. Mm -hmm. There is a power that's behind this darkness that we're fixing to go into in 20 and 22. And we can't go into this year drunken, not prayerful, not having the word of God in us. We've got to have something to come up against this darkness that we're going into. I mean, it's, it's here, but it's going to increase as we're going to the end. 2022 and on up, it's going to get worse, sir. So prepare yourselves for it. Just like people about this COVID thing, we're going to be going in two or three months. But now, you know, it's, it's spreading and, and more people are being affected now. And they, and they get rid of one thing, it just, I mean, it just changes to something else. Got to be a spirit. Amen. Vaccination can't get rid of the devil unless you've been vaccinated with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead, finish. And has translated us into the kingdom. And it translated us. Of his dear son. In, in that verse 13. Yes, sir. Read verse 12 and 13 again. Giving thanks unto the Father, uh -huh. who has made us meet to be partakers. Made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance uh -huh. of the inheritance of the saints in light. Of the saints that's in light. Uh -huh. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Delivered us from the powers of darkness. And has translated us. And has, you know, to be translated is to be transferred from one place to another. When he translated us, he brought us out from one uh, realm, from one lifestyle into another. When we lived in hate, now he translated us into the kingdom of his new son, a kingdom of love. Translated us out of sickness into health. Translated us out of sin into righteousness. Out of abundance in the hands of the devil into the liberty of the sons of God. Thank God when you got saved, you become a new preacher and you no longer ran with that bunch out there. The Spirit of God took you and made you a new preacher and translated you. He brought you out from under darkness, out from under sin, out from under the curse, out from under bondage, out from under false religion and translated you, transferred you into the kingdom of life, into the kingdom of his new son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He didn't save you and just leave, and just leave you out there for the devil to come back in, but he brought you into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Read. Romans, I mean John. So you get John 8 and verse 12. And uh, Sister Gretchen, you get uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. And Brother uh, James, you get Ephesians 5 and 8. Okay, Sister Blue, let's read John chapter 8 and verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, uh -huh. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Jesus spoke and said, I am the light of the world. World is light. Darkness is on the earth. Gross darkness is upon mankind. I am the light of the world. Uh -huh. 
He that follows me, he that followed me, shall not walk in darkness. Shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. But shall have the light of life. Okay, Matthew five and verse fourteen. Ye are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. See, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Now look what he said. You are the light of the world. See, you're not just in the light, but you are the light of the world. Your life, your testimony, you are the light. Well, look at me, Father. He said, I didn't say that. You are the light of the world. Uh-huh. A city that is set on a hill. A city that's set on a hill. As you're going to 2022, remember, you're the only light the world is going to see. That can't be here. The city on the hill that cannot be here. Can't hide this testimony. You can't hide this holiness. You cannot hide this life of Christ. Go ahead. Neither do men light a candle uh -huh. and put it under a bushel. See? But on a candlestick. But on a candlestick. And it give it light. And it give it light. To all that are in the house. To all that's in the house. Okay. Ephesians 5 and verse 8, Brother James. For ye were sometimes darkness. You were sometimes. How many of y'all remember when you was in darkness? You were sometimes darkness. Uh-huh. But now are you light in the Lord. But now, thank God. Hallelujah. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in the darkness. But now, what you like in the Lord? Uh huh. See, you are light in the Lord. Not in religions, not in your own righteousness, but you are light in the Lord. As long as you abide in Him, that light is going to illuminate you. His light is going to shine out of you. Go ahead. Let's, let's, I'll tell you what. Let's go to Genesis right quickly. Genesis chapter 1, I believe. Or just read that a little bit. Genesis 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created, you know, sometimes to get a truth, you got to go back to where it originates, why it begins, so you can get the whole picture of it. Uh huh. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form uh -huh. and void. Listen, between verse 1 and verse 2, it could be thousands of years. It could be thousands of years between verse 1 and verse 2. God don't create nothing void. God don't create nothing empty. He don't create nothing. He don't create darkness. He's not the author of darkness. Read verse 1 again. In the beginning. In the beginning. God created the heaven. God created the heavens. And the earth. And the earth. Okay, the next verse. And the earth was without the form. Now listen. Something happened between verse 1 and verse 2. And verse 2 said, all of a sudden, it's a totally different picture. And the earth was what? Without form. Was without form. And void. And void. And darkness. And darkness. Upon the face of the deep. Something happened between verse 1 and verse 2. To cause the earth to be void and dark and without form. Yeah. Go ahead. And the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God. Moved upon the face of the water. Moved upon the face of the waters. And God. See God didn't do that again. Yes. We are the waters. Waters represent people. The Spirit of God. Fixing the move upon the face of the water. Uh huh. And God said, and God said, let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And there was light. Uh huh. And God saw the light. God saw the light. That it was good. That it was good. And God divided the light. God divided the light from the dark. From the dark. God divided the light from the darkness. God don't want light to have his light to have nothing to do with this darkness. Go ahead. And God called the light day. Wait a minute, let's stop right there. Let's read. Yeah. You know, God didn't make this darkness. Where did it come from? It didn't come from God. God didn't make this darkness. It was already on the face of the earth. 
And God said, let there be light. Didn't he? And, and, and you know, God made the light. He's the author of the light. In him is light. And there is no darkness in him at all. No darkness in God. So this darkness did not come from God. Come on. All this darkness out here in the world and in the nation and in man's heart, it didn't come from God. Where did it come from? Go ahead. Well, okay. And God saw the light that is good. Now, we're, 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 we're going to another scripture here. It was already on the earth. It was already on the earth. Read it again. It was all, the darkness was already on the earth. This darkness was already deep. There's a deep darkness in man's hearts right now. God said, let there be light. Okay, let's go to John first. Well, I just quoted First John chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. And then over there, right back in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Ephesians 5 and verse 8. Read that. I'm just laying the salvation right there. For you were sometimes darkness. For you were sometimes in darkness. And now are you light in the Lord. And now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. See, walk as children. Darkness and light could not dwell together. Y'all believe that? God divided them. When he made the light, he refused to allow that light to dwell with darkness. Didn't he? Two powers. One of them is light and one of them is darkness. And they can never uh, dwell together. God set a difference. Never. Let's read uh, another scripture here. I mean, he said, I mean, burdens against each other. Anytime light comes, darkness has to go. Anytime darkness comes, you know, if, if, if there's light there, the darkness can't overcome that light. That's right. Can't. No, sir. Tell you what. Turn all these lights out just for a moment. Hold up. Somebody, turn them all out just for a moment. Close that back door. All of them. See, this is what was upon the face of the earth. And God said, what? Let there be, wait a minute, let there be light. Somebody out there falling. <laughs> Ain't got no light, you're going to stumble and fall. Don't hurt yourself. That's why I'm giving you a little bit of light over there. Thank <laughs> God, have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what's wrong with people stumbling and falling out there, because they don't have no light. But you know what? You know what? All this darkness, it cannot put out a little light. That little bit of light has got to be here. Oh, 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 yeah. All that darkness has got to go because that little bit of light. Thank you, Jesus. And that's the way it is with you. On your job. Darkness may be everywhere. But there's a little bit of light. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. God gave light to me over darkness. God gave light power over darkness. Darkness does not have power over light. Light has power over darkness. Anywhere the light shines, the darkness has to disappear. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. You can turn it back on for me. Yes, Lord. Yes. That's why. Don't go to the issue of truth.
struggling in it. No more than if you're, you know, perplexed and vexed. You got something in you greater than what's out there in the world. He said the darkness, uh-uh, darkness can mix with light. No wonder God said, oh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked. Be you not unequally yoked. Together with unbelievers. With unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. God said, don't go out there and marry somebody that ain't saved. Don't go out there and have a relationship with somebody that, that's walking in the darkness. God separated the darkness from the light. Go ahead, finish reading. But what fellowship? What fellowship? Had righteousness with unrighteousness. Had righteousness with unrighteousness. And what communion? What communion? Had light with darkness. Had light with darkness. See? Yes. Go ahead. And what concord had Christ with the light? God said, light and darkness ain't got no fellowship. God, I mean, God gave light, and that light is pre preeminence. That light is supposed to be superior. That light is supposed to have dominion. That light is supposed to drive back the darkness. We're going to face darkness out there when we're facing people out there. So in your school, you might be the only light there, but the darkness can't put you out. That's right. You might be on your job. You might be the only light on your job, but that light has preeminence. That light has superiority. That light has dominion over all that darkness around you. You might be the only one in your house that's got light. This, this Holy Ghost light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This Holy Ghost light of mine. I'm going to let, it, let that light shine in 2022. Don't put it under a bushel. Put it on the lampstand where everybody around you can see it. Don't be ashamed of the way you live, the way you dress, how you talk. Don't be ashamed of your testimony. Don't be ashamed. Let that light shine. Quit putting your light under a bush. Quit putting your light and your testimony why people can't see it, can't hear it. There's a man, a businessman, coming to our house yesterday. And we was getting some uh, things done. And while I went out there to feed the dogs, my wife see him. And he, she, she, she picked up the spirit of fear on him that he was afraid of having a stroke. And she told him, she said, look, back in 2005, I had a stroke. And I died. But God brought me back to life again. And I couldn't use my, my right side. On my left side, and she began to testify to him and expel in that darkness and that fear and that anxiety that was in him. That's what light is supposed to do. Expel that darkness. Drive that fear out. Drive that anxiety out. Drive that worry out. God, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, and that power is shining through that light. That light is a power, and that darkness is shining through that light. Let's read. Y'all, y'all heard of y'all heard of Joe Man, Joe Man, Joe Manchin, him? Yes. Huh? Yes. Y'all know how they've been trying to pass this bill of uh, three and a half trillion dollars. Already passed the bill of a hundred, only one and a half trillion dollars, and have brought this inflation upon us. Now they want to pass up three and a half trillion dollars. And Joe Manchin said, no, we can't pay for it. It's just going to throw us into the greatest uh, inflation. And it's going to destroy our nation. Out of 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans, one Democrat stood up and said, not so, not so. 
and he stopped policies. He stopped Biden's policies. Went down the track. That's what I'm telling you. That light, you let that light shine up. He can stop the devil on your job, in your home, in your school. Let that light shine. Let the testimony of Jesus come on it out of your mouth, out of your, when you're going to 2022, you're going to face darkness. But remember, that light in you has the preeminence. That light in you has the dominion. That light in you is power that drives the darkness out.
Against spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness. High places. High places. Well done, Washington. Witches. Fasted. From Trump to lose. Fasted for fighting to win. Witches. Work on all kinds of witchcraft. Go ahead. Work will put on the whole armor. Huh? That was all of that. Back up, read it again. I like it. For we wrestle not. Go ahead. Against flesh and blood. Against flesh and blood. Against principalities uh -huh. and powers. Powers. Against the rulers of darkness. Rulers of darkness. Of See, world. these people are ruling, but they're in darkness. They're ruling, but the God of this world have blinded their mind, and they can't see that the laws that they're passing are against God. Uh -huh. They have passed these policies, and in doing so, they have opened up the gates of hell for all kinds of demons to come loose on the face of the earth. Watch the, 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 the borders being opened. See, they opened the borders, and over two million people have flooded in through the borders, and now they have, oh, have passed policies that have given the devil a license to come in with demon spirits. Somebody said, what do you mean? Giving them a license to bring in perversion, to bring in uncleanness, and this is what we are fighting against. This is what you're fixing to fight when you're going to 20 and 22. This is why you need to put on the whole armor of God. You're fixing to go into a warfare, and the weapons of our warfare are not covered, but they're mighty through God, putting down strongholds, imagination, and every power that comes against the knowledge of God. What we're fighting. It's not your family you're fighting. The devil is what we're fighting. And he's been given the license to come on this earth and do what he wants to because of the policies that we have given him the license to do. So listen, can I have this five more minutes? Okay. Five more minutes. And I will. Uh, now, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been watching the weather. They're saying after 12 o'clock uh, tomorrow, uh, this cold weather is going to be filtering in. So, you, you know, Lord's willing, we'll have service in the morning at 10 o'clock. And, uh, we need to hit the ground running. We don't need to give a bunch of space to idleness. But, I mean, if the weather does not deteriorate until after 12, we have service. You know, from 10 to um, 12. So we can, um, you know, put punctuation on what I'm saying right now. But I'm still laying the foundation right now. Okay, let's, um, let me see, I think we finished. Yes, sir. Yeah. Acts 8 and verse, I mean, Ephesians chapter 6 yes. and verse 20, didn't we finish, finish that? Yes, sir. And uh, I've already quoted that scripture in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, darkness. See, see let's read that again, and then we're going to um, get ready to wind that. Let's read that again, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and verse 3. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and verse 3. One and, one. And, earth, and the earth was without form. And the earth was without form. And void. And void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. See, and darkness, it was already here on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God. Moved upon the face of the waters. As, as he did then, you watch it. That's what he's fixing to do. I remember at the fairgrounds, Brother Tua had a vision, Sister Jean. He saw the Spirit of God strolling on the face of the earth again. Darkness covers the earth, but God says, my spirit, put you to move. Uh -huh. And God said, God, see, all of this was already here. Before God made Adam and Eve, this darkness was here. 
We don't believe, read on that. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Luke 10 and verse 18. Let's read that. Got it? Read it. And he said unto them, He said unto them, I beheld Satan. Look what it said. I beheld, I don't know in what time or what period or what generation this was, but I beheld Satan as lightning. As lightning. Fall from him. Fall from him. This happened somewhere. This is why the earth became void. This is why the earth became dark. This is why darkness was upon the face of the earth. Because somewhere Satan was kicked out of heaven and was cast down in this earth. When he was cast down in this earth, that's where darkness came from. Uh-huh. Is that all of that? Yes, sir. It's and fall. The devil being cast out of this earth. Thank you, Jesus. I'll, I'll, I'll pick this up. In the, I'll pick this up in the morning. 10 o'clock. Because, I, as I said, we went to at least, Sister uh, Tammy told me she went to uh, one of the saints' church, I believe Sister Annie's church in Texas. And what time they saw a service down there? 8 o'clock. Saw a service down there at 8 o'clock. 30 cars in the parking lot. Huh? At 7.45. At 7.45. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Oh, wow. I was crying out like on Monday night prayer. Crying out like we do here on Monday night prayer. You see, like, we, we ought to be able to, I want to challenge y'all. See if y'all can get here at 9.30 and pray. Oh, we can do it. Now, we can some, do it. We can some, do it. Somebody said, whoa. We, we can do it. We're at 7.45. We get to work at 745. Some of us are six. That's right. Amen. Some are six. We can do it. And you listen, brother, so you better be praying for you go to work. Yeah. Because of what you, the darkness, you got to fight on your jobs. Amen. You have to get up at five o'clock. Three. Three o'clock. Now, if you have to do that for, in the natural, then what about for God's work? Come on. What about for the kingdom of God? Okay, read that. Thank you, Jesus. Now, did I tell you to read one yet? No. <clears throat> well, I think y'all just read Luke 10 and 18. Yeah. I'll just stop there, but I'm going to pick this up and go into part two of this in the morning. And how uh, I many of you see God is trying to direct us in the right way? With all this darkness, I'm telling you, you think 2020 was bad, 2021, there's something worse that's coming in 2022. That's why we better have this to hear. And that's why we better get in here and pray and seek God. So they have a good foundation against what's coming in 2022, or you won't make it through that year. You'll be backslid, or some of these plagues will fall on you. That's why we don't play with God. We have entered into the last days. That which has been spoken by the prophets has come upon us. We've seen it in 2020. We've seen it in, you know, God told Brother Tell, he said, get out of my way so I can do what I want to do. And he wouldn't get out of the way. He would not get out of the way. And he was um, I remember in the 70s, I was telling Brother Chuck, Brother Chuck was talking about all these bad things that's man, we just sit up here waiting for a minute. I'm let you. All these things that's coming. God told us they were supposed to come in the 70s. And in the 80s. Remember? Mm -hmm. and, and, and God told Brother Chuck to put his shirt on. Be very modest. Pull your shirt off. Pull your t-shirt off. And he said, uh, tell seven preachers to get a belt and to whoop you seven times. Each one of them, seven times. Seven stripes. And he said, this is a sign 
of how America is going to be whipped, not once, not twice, but seven times. He said, every strike, every, 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 every time you get hit, he said, that's a strike against America. And he made us. I didn't want to do it. Because I seen him fasting and praying and stinning bones. And I hit him. He said, you better hit me. And you know, I was afraid, but I would not allow myself to put no hard lashes on him. And he bore this sign for a whole year. And he went to some of the other preachers, and some of them just anger got him in. Beat him and bruised him so bad. Black and blue. Those preachers ain't around no more. But he bore that sign for a whole year. He said, this is going to be a sign of how God is going to whoop America. But he stood in the gap, fasted, prayed. And now he's not standing in the gap. And now the, the, the veil is beginning to crack and beginning to burst. And we're fixing to see this veil begin to Wash, wash people off that ain't on the right foundation. Wash them off. Look at what has happened all these years. You don't have, you have a rivulet. You have a, a few people here and there that's still standing in the gap. Why? Because people did not pray when they were told to pray. See, if we can't be faithful in that which is least, how can we be faithful in that which is much? If we can't overcome now, how can we overcome when it gets bad? It's going to get bad. And if you ain't playing now, you're going to fall. If you're not seeking God now, you're going to backslide. If you're not getting close to God now, this darkness is going to sweep you into a gross darkness. Thank you. And that's what he did. We've got plenty of wood. 
You don't know what affliction to hit this world. Come on, let's talk to anyone else. Let's talk to God here a few minutes. Please, please. Dear 930, praying and service at 10. Sacrifice. You know that sacrifice is one that God blesses the most. Sacrifice your time in the day and get here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come, let's lift our hands to heaven. God, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, for this light, God, that you're going to bring forth. We know that we're living in a time of darkness, in gross darkness, but God, help us to give ourselves to you. Come on, tell him. Lord, help us to give ourselves to you. Lord, that we might be light in the Lord. You said we're the children of the day, not of the night. Lord, that these things should come upon us unaware. But Father, help us to enter into our altars and pray. Pray you there for always. Lord, that we might be found worthy to escape. Lord, the things that are coming upon the face of the earth. Lord, you told us that you're looking for it and want to raise up a people that will be a light in this darkness, that will be a witness, Lord, to this generation and a testimony. God, in this time, Lord, I offer myself. Look at him and say, Lord, I offer myself to be a light. I offer myself to be a witness. I offer myself to be a testimony to this generation that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Lord, let a light shine upon us today. Let it shine in us and expel all of the darkness. Lord, we know that walking in the flesh is to walk in darkness. To walk in the corner is to walk in darkness. Lord, you said that if we serve the flesh, we would reap death. But if we would follow the Spirit and mind the things of the Spirit, we would have life and peace. Lord, we want life and peace in our lives. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bring life and peace in the light of the gospel into our lives today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word, Lord. Help us to set our hearts to seek you. Lord, to dedicate ourselves not forsaking the center of ourselves together. But Lord, come into the house of God. Lord, and hear your word and be an endure. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, God bless you.